Hi, it's Jake. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. I'm very pleased to say that uh, I have a special guest today, Dale J. Stevens, the founder of uh, UnCollege. I think it would be fair to say, Dale, that what you're doing um, with UnCollege is really a revolutionary thing. Um, So thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Would you like to just start off, for those um, who don't know, we, we talked on this show before about um, unschooling and about John Holt's ideas and, and sort of the, the issue with compulsory education and alternatives for parents and children um, looking at, at, um, at unschooling. But would you like to explain what UnCollege means and, and what it is that this movement that you're leading is about? UnCollege is an extension of unschooling to the realm of higher education. It's a social movement challenging the notion that college is the only path to success. And at uncollege.org, we provide resources, coaching, and content to help people forge their own educational paths. I was unschooled as a child myself and left school in fifth grade, so I've been outside the system for quite some time. Yet, although I didn't go to middle school or high school, I still assumed that going to college was the next path to success. So I spent six months there, as my parents did, as my peers were doing, and as society expected. Yet, I was really frustrated after having been outside the system and engaging with my education in the real world to be suddenly thrust back into a classroom where I was writing papers about medieval Tahitian religions. As you might expect, that was slightly frustrating. So I I left college in early early March of this year and uh, have been outside the system since. I'm now working on a book for Penguin called Hacking Your Education, which is a practical guide to gaining the skills that school doesn't teach but are most requisite for success in the real world. Right, right. And you've also um, managed to win a uh, Teal Fellowship uh, a scholarship as well for the work that you're doing. Is that right? I did receive a Teal Fellowship in the recognition of what I'm doing. The Teal Fellowship is sponsored by Peter Teal, the co-founder of PayPal and Person Investor on Facebook. And they chose 24 young individuals from all around the world uh, and awarded them 100 $100,000 to leave college and pursue their dreams outside of college. Um, and in fact, the uh, uh, the applications for the 2012 class of fellows just opened yesterday. So if you're under if you're under 20 and have an idea, go to tlfellowship.org to apply. Awesome, awesome. Well, I wanted to ask you. Um, and this is especially relevant given your experience because you did, um, as you say, you did originally go to college and thinking that that would be um, the, the sort of the best part, so to speak. And I, I wanted to ask you, for those who, let's say somebody who's just just about to start college, who's interested in um, the idea of uncollege, interested in personal freedom, thinks, yeah, that sounds great, you know, I would definitely like to um, direct my own learning, but... Um, but on the other hand, I look around me, um, all the people I know who succeed in life, like in, in my family and friends, um, the, the intelligent people seem to go to college. Um, maybe it's a crappy investment, uh, you know, it's getting more expensive and so forth. But still, um, it's something that is recognized. And, you know, I think there's probably an attitude that, yeah, college is probably maybe not as uh, as as wonderful as I thought it as as it might be, but nonetheless, I kind of need to go if I want to get on in life because if I don't, I'll be perceived as a loser, a dropout. You know, I won't be able to actually ach- be a high achiever and uh, and make the most of my life. And what would you say to to people who who are coming from that sort of, of uh, mindset? There was a study done at Princeton in 1999 by some economists named Dale and Kruger, and they, what they found was that uh, even if you apply to Harvard, are rejected, and instead attend some other institution, you still achieve the same potential, the same earnings over the course of your life as someone who actually went to and graduated from Harvard, which just goes to show that it's the type of person who believes that they should go to Harvard, not the type of person who actually does that finds success in life. Right. So I think we've got, we've got a problem of correlation and causation. So when people say, oh, people are smart because they went to college, the reality is that smart people go to college. It's not that college made them any smarter. They would have found just as much success outside the institution or going to a different college. But we correlate that success falsely to the institution. Right, right. 
And did you find uh, like I, I think that is a, a great argument, and on a purely um, rational level, um, I think that would also be something that a lot of people could appreciate. What do you think about the psychological barriers to, um, well, basically, um, as you put it in your manifesto, being an educational deviant? You know, I mean, obviously, there is a huge cultural bias towards college. Um, what's your experience been of the kind of response that you've had from other people? And what would you say to those who are, um, are worried about it, who may maybe can accept these kinds of rational arguments, but are worried about the sort of psychological challenges of really going against the mainstream in that way? So here's the thing. Gritty people tend to make other people uncomfortable. And the reason is because everyone is fine with prison as long as everybody else is in prison too. Right. But as soon as someone stages a jailbreak, everyone freaks out and starts questioning their own decisions. And that's essentially what, what I'm doing. I'm staging a jailbreak. And everybody who's in college is starting to question whether that was the best use of their time for three or four years of their life, or also money, whether it was worth taking on an average of $27,000 in debt in the U.S. or paying up to 9,000 pounds in the U.K. now. Mm. Um, and certainly, certainly there is a psychological barrier. But I think as the realization that investing in your future may not be best done by spending hundreds of thousands of dollars and years of your life, the psychological barrier to doing that will change mm. and alternative lifestyles and paths will become more accepted. And that's, that's why I'm writing this book. In the book, I'm profiling people who found success, success without degrees, but who aren't the Bill Gates or Steve Jobs of the world. Right. They're normal people. They live happy, productive lives. They aren't billionaires. Mm. But they've gotten to uh, contribute to society without having credentials. Right, right. That's awesome. That that sounds. Um, I, I really look forward to seeing that book. And did you say it's coming out in the new year? Your book. Or... The book will come out in April of 2013. Book publishing is a very slow process. Right, right. I wanted to ask, like, uh, you know. Again, thinking about people who this could be a potentially interesting option for them, they're currently considering college. One of the things that occurs to me is if somebody has ambitions to go into a field that is currently highly regulated, let's say medicine, for example, or maybe, I don't know, law or other types of fields that are pretty highly regulated, if you're really interested in practicing medicine, then there really doesn't seem to me to be a lot of way around um, the college route just purely because of the certification issues. What do you think about people who might be interested in, in fields that are currently very, very, uh, have a very entrenched uh, college-based certification system? Something like medicine, I think, already functions on an uncollege model. You have residencies, you have practicums. Students have to get out of the classroom and into the actual work environment before they're certified to work as practitioners. And while it certainly could improve, and there could be more experiential learning, um, that's, that's not my main concern because it is an uncollege model. P pure, pure, homes, pure unschoolers or, or uncollegers, I think, would realize that if you're going to school for the right reasons, because you want to enter a certified profession or because you want to access laboratories or because you want to take a course with a certain professor, mm. then that is unschooling. Right. Unschooling is ultimately about choosing your own path and being empowered to make your own decisions. It's not about leaving school or shunning the system. Right, right. Yeah, that makes total sense. It's a little bit like um, the, the difference between what John Holt talks about with the, the capital S schools and little s schools, that you know, if you make the choice voluntarily to get a specific skill or whatever, then that's a very, very different uh, process to just going along uh, into school and having a whole bunch of information dumped on you in order to sort of show that you've um, passed the approved system. And uh, it strikes me that, that what you're talking about there is much more going into... Um, get the medical qualifications so that you can go on and do what it is that you want to do. 
So I wanted to ask you um, about sort of resources and community for people who are who are doing uncollege. I I couldn't find it on your website, but I remember a while ago you had some suggestions about you know things to consider if you're not going to college to that that um, that you can that you can do especially to kind of support each other. And I think you've described this a bit in your manifesto as well that. You know, rather than doing this just purely alone, there's a lot of value and potential in in having mentors and also having sort of other people to to um, you know to bounce off. So, can you describe what you th- what you see as the opportunity for for people to get um, support from others and perhaps through the website or whatever? So, on uncollege.org, we have a, an entire resources page with a large collection. These types of things, and we found that there are there are many opportunities for individuals to find um, other ways to engage with communities, both online and offline, that are non-traditional. There are a bunch of opportunities to find tutors or become one, something like Betterfly or Tutor Cloud, for example. Mm. You can form your own study groups with something like Open Study, or switch Facebook into study, study mode with Hoot, Hoot.me. Um, or you can you can participate in uh, in real world workshops with something like Skillshare, or take classes at Tech Shop, or go and engage with a community like General Assembly, which is opening their first, which is opening a, a branch in London uh, this December. So it's not a question of finding a community in the school classroom; it's a question of finding a community elsewhere in the world. Right, right. You've talked. I know in in the blog and elsewhere about both the uh, declining value of college education, but also the increasing cost, um, just in terms of the enormous amount of uh, uh, debt that students are taking on. Are you finding that that is, um, you know, is that the argument that you that people really are most receptive to when you talk about this? That they can see that, you know, really the value proposition of going to college is is just. Uh, is just getting worse and worse? Or, or what do you find that people most respond to um, when you talk to others about the potential for un college? Most individuals are concerned about the economic cost of college, and that's understandable. It's, uh, you're taking a big risk when you, le- when you give up four years of your life and take on hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and forego tens of thousands of dollars in earnings in exchange for a brighter future. And I put it, a brighter future in quotes because... That future isn't just just isn't materializing. Millions of people are graduating from college every year, yet there aren't millions of new jobs every year mm. that require college college degrees. And that's why twenty two and a half percent of college graduates in the U.S. are unemployed under twenty five, and twenty two twenty two percent of those under twenty five with college degrees are working in jobs that don't require their their degree. These people went to four years of college just to end up working in a bar and collect welfare checks. Mm. That doesn't seem like a fair trade-off. Yeah, absolutely. What do you What do you find the um, response has been like to the uncollege concept and and you know the the writing and stuff that you're doing from if you like the traditional educational establishment? I mean, are they just ignoring you, or have you had any kind of debates with uh, with um, um, you know, people in, in academia. What's the response been to what you're doing? There's been a lot of positive interest from people who are, who are in academia because administrators and professors realize that there are problems with the system and they're the most interested in changing it. I've been in contact with the presidents of big-name universities um, who are interested in taking the lessons of on college and building learning environments that uh, enable students to become self-directed. Right. become self-motivated and hack their education from within the system. That's interesting because I would have anticipated that you would have, um, I mean, essentially, uh, you're kind of saying the emperor has no clothes with regard to uh, the, the current college system and, and the, the value proposition that it presents to students. So I would have expected that you would have found that that would be um, a bit more challenging. I mean, in the way that you, you described, I think it can be very challenging to students too because if you own college then, as you said, you know, it immediately um, prompts the question for people who are in college, well, I mean, is this really a decision that I, that I am getting 
value out of? I mean, should I really be doing it? And I think that that can be quite challenging. So I'm surprised that, that um, in a sense, you haven't experienced more pushback, but, uh, but that's great to hear. So um, what is the, obviously you've got the book coming out. What's your next, what, what's going to happen next for the, for the oncology movement? How do you see things progressing over the next um, sort of few years? We're working on developing a fellowship program to take the lessons of the book and put them into a very concrete um, program to help individuals learn the skills that school doesn't teach, but are requisite for success in the real world. And that, that uncurriculum of sorts uh, will launch in fall of 2013, um, just, just after the book. So we're, we're, we're working on developing that. Right. So the uncurriculum is uh, something um, that you're still working on. Uh, can you say anything about the kinds of things that you're considering for that? We're looking at uh, the sorts of meta-level skills that school doesn't teach, things like uh, time management, things like how to build a portfolio. Um, and, and we're going to, to choose a select group of 10 individuals to participate because that's a way that we think we can hack the system. More and more we see the value of degrees declining and the value of brands increasing. So if we can make the brand of Uncollege one that denotes self-directed, self-motivated, passionate individuals, then that works on all fronts. So hopefully we can get thousands of p- people to apply and take a select group um, and help them help them succeed outside the institution across a broad range of backgrounds, initiatives, and uh, experiences. Mm. So, how many people do you do you know um, who are sort of pursuing Uncollege uh, as a, as an idea? I mean, do you have what's your experience been about um, sort of getting getting other people involved? Are there a very broad, diverse range of people, or you know, and and roughly how many people are, do you do you have contact with who who are doing this? Literally, hundreds of people have emailed me, and I get five to ten emails a day from people who have left college and are pursuing their education in the real world. There's an active group of about 150 people on Facebook um, who, are, who are actively out hacking their education. Um, but there are, there are hundreds more that I've had smaller levels of contact with over the last six months. Right, right. One last question I guess wanted to ask you about um, the, the, the relationship between uncollege and unschooling. I mean, there are various um, groups out there pursuing unschooling. Um, do you see, you know, how do you see the link between, between the two? Is there, do, you, do you think there is um, a lot of scope for contact between unschooling um, groups and conferences and stuff and the, and the uncollege stuff? Or, uh, are you in touch? How do, the, how do these two things link up? I think Uncollege is, is a natural extension of unschooling um, and will we'll function in that way for, uh, for, for quite some time. Um, and it, it provides a, and it, uh, the next step for unschoolers who've been outside the system. What, I come, what I've come to realize is that unschooling is a lifelong commitment. It's not something you can do and then hop back into the college system, right. but in an attitude of lifelong and lifelong learning that you'll carry with you throughout your life. Yeah. Do you think it was your particular experience with uh, unschooling that gave you the perspective to think about uh, Uncollege in, 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 in this respect? Most certainly. Yeah. So I want to make sure that people uh, have sort of the resources to look at. So could you just uh, tell them where to go in terms of your website and, and the best places to start? If someone's interested in this, you obviously you have the website, you've got the Facebook page. So could you just um, point them in the right direction for 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 get, getting, learning more about this. You can find everything about Uncollege that you want to know and more at uncollege, U-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E dot org. Awesome. And you also have, I believe you have your own page as well for com. Is that right? Or is that your page? That's my personal website, yes. Cool. And obviously from your site, um, 